This entire chapter is about multiplying decimals. We're at 4.1, multiplication patterns with decimals. We can use patterns to help us place the decimal point in a product. And the decimal point moves one place to the right as we multiply by each power of 10. We learned about powers of 10 back in video 1.4, which is linked in the description. We have one power of 10, it's 10 to the first power, multiplied by 25 hundredths. The decimal point is going to move from between the 0 and the 2 to in between the 2 and the 5. It's going to move one hop. We'll have 2 and 5 tenths. We have 10 to the second power times 25 hundredths. We have the decimal point here. We have a 2 exponent, so we're going to have 1, 2 hops. The decimal point will be to the right side of the 5. We'll have 25 whole. If we have 10 to the third power times 25 hundredths, the decimal point is going to move 3 hops. It's right here, and it's going to go 1, 2, 3. It's going to end up on the other side over here. We'll add a 0 as a placeholder in the once place. So let's talk about this more. We know 1 times any number is that number. It keeps its identity. So when we're multiplying by tens, hundreds, thousands, or by tenths, hundredths, thousands, the product is going to have the same numbers as the factor here. The only thing that's happening is the decimal point is going to move. So if we have 1 tenth times 25, which is a whole number, we know the decimal point would be over here because we're multiplying it by 1 tenth. It's going to move one place to the left as 2 and 5 tenths. It's going to move one up to the left because that is a 1 tenth. If we have 1 hundredth times 25, a whole number, the decimal point is over here because it's a whole number, it's going to move two hops to the left. We'll have 25 hundredths. Throughout this chapter, I'm going to discuss this quick trick several times. The total of decimal hops we count in the factors will be the amount of decimal hops in the product. If we're multiplying 1 hundredth times 3 tenths, starting from the right side, we count 1, 2 hops to get to the decimal point. For the 3 tenths, there's just, from the right side, 1 hop to get to the decimal point. That's 2 hops and 1 hop. That's 3 hops in all. Our product is going to have 3 hops to get to the decimal point. So it's going to start here and go 1, 2, 3 hops. And then we can insert zeros as placeholders. 1 hundredth times 3 tenths is equal to 3 thousandths. As I said before, we learned powers of 10 and exponents and the pattern of zeros in video 1.4 that's linked in the description. So remember the base is this number here and the little number that's up on the right side corner up here is the exponent. And the exponent tells us how many times we need to use the base as a factor. We have 10 to the 0 power. The exponent is also telling us if these are if the base is a 10 how many zeros we're going to write next to the number 1. And it's a 0, so we're going to have 0 zeros next to this 1. It's just a 1. For 10 to the first power, we just have a 10. It's telling us to have 1 0 next to the 1, so we have 10. Here we have 10 to the second power. It's telling us to have two zeros next to the number 1, so we have 100. It's also telling us how many factors of 10 we have. We have one factor of 10, so it's just a 10. We have two factors of 10. We have 10 times 10, which is equal to 100. We have three factors of 10. We're going to have three zeros next to the 1. We have 1,000. We have four factors of 10. We're going to have a 1 with four zeros. We're going to have 10,000. See the pattern? If we have cookies that are 18 hundredths inches thick, each cookie, and put them into stacks of 10, how tall will each stack measure? We can multiply 10 times 18 hundredths. We have one zero, so we're going to move the decimal point one hop to the right. It was over here in between the zero and the one. It's going to move one hop to the right in between the one and the eight. It'll be one and eight tenths inches. 
If we put them into stacks of 100, we have 100 times 18 hundredths. We have two zeros, so we're going to move the decimal point two hops to the right. It's here. We're going to move it one, two hops to the right. We'll have 18 inches for each stack. If we put the cookies into stacks of 1,000, we have 1,000 times 18 hundredths. We have three zeros, so we're going to move the decimal point three hops to the right. But I only see two hops that we can do here. When we go to make our third hop, we hop under an empty space and put a zero there as a placeholder. It would be 180 inches. If we put them into stacks of 10,000, we have four zeros here, so we're going to move the decimal point four hops to the right. It's going to start here in between the zero and the one, and we're going to move one, two, three, four hops to the right. We're going to have to put a zero here and a zero here in the tens and ones places as placeholders. It would be 1,800 inches for each stack. So we can see that there's a one here, so our product is going to involve a 1 and an 8. We have a 1 here, so our product is not going to involve a 1 and an 8. The number of zeros tells us how many hops to the right we need to move. Bob paid $72.35 to have a new lock installed for the front door of his house. He paid 100 times as much for new windows and a tenth of the price of the windows to have a ceiling light installed. How much money did each cost? So we know the price of the lock and the price of the windows is being compared to the price of the lock. It's 100 times as much for the new windows. And the ceiling light is one tenth of the windows. So the ceiling light is being compared to the windows where the windows is being compared to the lock. So we know the cost of the lock $72.35, the windows are 100 times as much, so it's 100 times $72.35. We have two zeros, so the decimal point will move two hops to the right. It's in between the two and the three, it's going to move two hops to the right, one, two. It's going to move to the right side of the five, we're going to have $7,235. Now we can use the price of the windows to find the ceiling light that is one-tenth as much. We multiply one-tenth times $7,235. Because it's one-tenth, we're going to move the decimal point one hop to the left, and we're going to insert a zero as a placeholder because this is money. We'll have $723.50. So we know the lock was $72.35. The windows were $7,235, and the light was $723.50. We can use a pattern to solve Bob's problem because we're multiplying by 100 and 1 tenth. It involves a 1, so we know that our product is going to involve the same numbers as this factor. We start with 1 times $72.35, and it keeps its identity. It's multiplied by 1. It's $72.35. When we multiply it by 10, we move the decimal point from here, in between the 2 and the 3, to in between the 3 and the 5. We have $723.50. When we multiply it by 100, we're going to move it two decimal places. So it's in between the 2 and the 3, and it's going to go 1, 2 hops, we have $7,235. We moved it one place, then we moved it two places for the amount of zeros. Now, to find the light, we know one times $7,235 is $7,235. It keeps its identity. When we multiply it by one-tenth, we're going to move one hop to the left. The decimal point is over here as a whole number. We're going to move it one hop to the left in between the 3 and the 5. It will be $723.50. And we add a zero as a placeholder for the 50 cents. We need to complete the pattern. 
we have 10 to the 0 power times 3 and 14 hundredths. 10 to the 0 power is just a 1. That means we have 1 times 3 and 14 hundredths. That's equal to 3 and 14 hundredths. 10 to the first power, it's telling us we just have one factor of 10. That means we're just multiplying it by 10. 10 times 3 and 14 hundredths. We have one zero, so we're going to move the decimal point one hop to the right. It's going to move from in between the 3 and the 1 to in between the 1 and the 4. 10 to the second power times 3 and 14 hundredths. We have two factors of 10. 10 times 10 is 100. We have two zeros. That means we're going to move the decimal point two hops to the right. The product will be 314. Now we have 10 to the third power. That means 10 times 10 times 10. That's 1,000. We have three zeros. That means we're going to move the decimal point three hops to the right. We have an empty space here for the third hop. We can put a zero there as a placeholder when we write the product. The product is 3,140. Here we have 1 times a whole number, 576. We multiply any number times 1. It keeps its identity, so it'll equal 576. We're going to multiply it by 1 tenth, 1 hundredth, and 1 thousandth. And because they all involve the number 1, our product is going to have a 576 in it. We're just going to be moving the decimal, the decimal point. We have 1 tenth, so it's going to hop to the left, 1 hop. 576 is a whole number, so the decimal point is over here. When it moves 1 hop to the left, it's going to be in between the 7 and the 6. It equals 57 and 6 tenths. Multiplying it by 100th, it's still going to involve a 5, a 7, and a 6 in the product, but now we're going to move the decimal point two hops to the left. It's a whole number, so it's right here on the right side of the 6. Two hops will put it in between the 5 and the 7. Can you see the pattern of what's happening as we multiply it by a tenth and a hundredth? The decimal point was over here as a whole number. Then it moved one hop in between the 7 and the 6. Then when we multiplied it by 100, it moved two hops. Now it's in between the 5 and the 7. Do you know where the decimal point will be if we multiply it by 1,000th? We've got three hops. If it's over here as a whole number on the right side of the 6, it's going to move three hops to be on the left side of the 5 it will equal 576 thousandths. When we multiply a factor by a power of 10, our product will be greater than that factor. We have 10 to the second power times 4 and 72 hundredths. Our product is going to involve the same numbers, a 4, a 7, and a 2, but it's going to be greater than that factor. We multiplied by the second power of 10, so the product, 472, is greater than the factor 4 and 72 hundredths. It moved two hops, didn't it? It moved two hops to the right. It went 1, 2, so now we have 472 whole number. If we multiply a factor by a decimal, our product will be less than that factor. So we have 784 as our factor, we're multiplying it by a hundredth, our product is going to be smaller, less than 784. We're going to move two decimal hops to the left, so it's going to go 1, 2, it'll be in between the 7 and the 8, we'll have 7 and 84 hundredths. Here we need to find the value of n. So remember, n is a variable, and a variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. So it's no different than if we had an empty square or a blank space here. n, some amount, times $1.68 is equal to $1,680. And the product is greater than the factor. 
So n must be a power of 10 so that it made the decimal point move to the right way over here. And we can count the decimal hops made to find the power of 10. It was in between the 1 and the 6 for the factor, but now it's over here. So in between the 1 and the 6, it went 1, 2, 3 hops. That means n must be 10 to the third power. Here we have 1 tenth times some amount n is equal to 27 and 9 tenths. We multiplied n by a decimal. It's got a 1. So we know n is going to involve a 2, a 7, and a 9. We just need to know where the decimal point's supposed to be. And the product must be less than the factor n. This product must be less than n because that has a decimal point. It's 1 tenth. And the total of hops in the factors is the amount of hops in the product. We have, from the right side, one hop for a one-tenth, and our product has one hop. Well, if all the hops in the factors are how many hops are in the product, and we have one and one, that means n must not have any hops or any decimals. So n does not have a decimal point. It must involve a two, a seven, and a nine, and without decimal points, it must be 279. One-tenth times 279 is 27 and nine-tenths. Because we're multiplying by a tenth, the decimal point moved from here one hop so that the product was 27 and nine-tenths. A garden snail can crawl about three-hundredths miles per hour. So that means it's three-hundredths of a mile each hour. How far will it crawl in 100 hours? So 100 hours is 100 times longer than one hour. We can multiply 3 hundredths by 100. 3 hundredths times 100. We have two zeros in the hundred. There's a one here, so we know our answer is going to involve a three. So we move the decimal point to the right two hops. It's going to move in between these two zeros, one, two hops. So it'll be on the right side of the three. So we have three whole, but we need to label our answer. It's asking how far it will crawl in 100 hours. The answer would be three miles. It's not three miles per hour because that's how fast it's crawling. It wanted to know how far it would crawl in 100 hours. The answer is three miles. So what we've done is when we have 10 times a decimal, it, the decimal point moves one hop to the right. So if we have 10 times 32 hundredths, the decimal point is going to move one hop to the right in between the 3 and the 2, we'll have 3 and 2 tenths. If we have 100 times a decimal, the decimal point is going to move two hops to the right. So if we have 100 times 32 hundredths, it's going to move from the left side of the 3, one, two hops, to the right side of the 2. We'll have 32 whole. When we have 1 tenth times a whole number, the decimal point is going to do one hop left, one tenth times 48 whole. We know if it's a whole number, the decimal point is on this side of the eight. It's going to move one hop left. We'll have four and eight tenths. When we have one hundredth times a whole number, the decimal point is going to do two hops left. It's going to go from this side of the eight, because it's 48 whole, it's going to go one, two hops. It'll be in front of the four on the left side. We'll have 48 hundredths. Our next lesson, 4.2, we're going to model multiplication of decimals with whole numbers. And remember, you can support my efforts to help you through PayPal or Patreon.com, and there's links in the description. Have a wonderful day. Bye.